guests at the Timmy the Toolman Studios, and that is Scott and his son Liam. And what we're going to do for them today is we are going to replace a front wheel bearing on their 2001 Toyota 4Runner. We already have some videos in existence that show the press work involved to replace a wheel bearing on the front of these rigs, but it's our manual hub swap videos, and people still can't figure out that we have those videos in order for them to replace their wheel bearing. So we're just going to go ahead and make this video all over again, start to finish, showing you everything you need to do to replace a wheel bearing on the front of a third generation Toyota 4Runner. The same procedure would be for a first gen Tacoma because the front ends of those vehicles are pretty much identical. Here's a whole knuckle assembly right here. You can see that you got the hub, dust shield, they got the steering knuckle itself, and then we still have the lower ball joint attached, which we're going to remove and replace with some new ones as part of this job. For this job, you're going to obviously need the bearing, you're going to need a couple seals, and you're going to need a snap ring. And we're going to put links to all those parts in the video description, along with links to all the tools we're going to use during this job. So we're going to do something a little bit different. Usually I'm the one turning all the wrenches, and by now you're probably tired of seeing me turning all the wrenches, so I'm going to let Liam do all the wrenching on this for the most part so he gets the experience because he's just getting into auto mechanics and this is going to be a great experience for him to do most of the wrenching. I'm the type of guy that learns by doing and most people are like that. You're going to learn better by doing it rather than just watching it. So Liam is going to be our guest wrench turner for this job. With all that said, we're going to get out to the rig, we're going to jack up the front end, we're going to just support the side with the bad wheel bearing on a six ton jack stand, get the wheel off and get started on this job. So when you're checking for wheel bearing play, you want to grab the wheel at the 12 o'clock position and the six o'clock position and you're pushing and pulling with opposing force. So I'm rocking it and if you feel play, that's wheel bearing play. Your wheel should not be moving. You shouldn't be hearing anything. If you grab it like this, this is more like checking for playing your steering, but grab it at the 12 o'clock and six o'clock positions and rock it. So when you're doing this, you will feel the play and you will most likely also hear it. You'll hear it knocking. And so that's a dead giveaway that the wheel bearing is wasted. Liam is going to remove the wheel. The first thing he's going to do is going to remove the cap with a small pry bar. Try getting it behind there and popping it with your hand. See if that works. Does it, will it work? You know, no. like pop, pop that like your hair like this. Like, yeah. Oh, like that. Like oh, that. there we there go. go. There we go. There you go. Now he's going to zip off the lug nuts with my DeWalt gun. This is like part of uh, Auto Mechanics 101. Always check before you start. So lefty loosey, counterclockwise, righty tighty. So if you switch this, then it's going to go the opposite direction. So always double check like when you're using the impact gun stuff so you don't break anything. So yeah, it's lefty loosey so you're ready to go. We're now going to remove the 10 millimeter bolt that holds the ABS sensor to the steering knuckle. You pull on the actual housing, don't pull on the cable. The next thing we're going to do is release this clip that holds the ABS line to this brake line bracket. Liam's going to use a uh, needle nose pliers to release it. Hopefully I did it. Yeah. The next thing we're going to remove is this bracket that holds the ABS line to the upper part of the knuckle. Yeah. You could just spread this with your hands and pull it off. Okay, now we have the ABS line fully disconnected from the steering knuckle. The next thing we're going to do is remove this 12 millimeter bolt so we can release the brake line bracket from the steering knuckle. 
The next thing we're going to do is remove the brake caliper. It's held on by two 17 millimeter bolts. Liam is first going to break it free with a half inch ratchet and 17 millimeter socket, and then we're going to zip them out the rest of the way with the Milwaukee gun. You getting it? <laughs> okay, hold on a second. Let me get you a breaker, bro. The half inch drive ratchet wasn't allowing enough mechanical advantage for Liam to break free the bolt, so now we switch to a two foot breaker bar. Two foot breaker bar, not doing it either, huh? <laughs> okay, hold on a second. <laughs> okay, we'll get it, we'll get it. Hold on. We decided we're gonna tag team this. Liam's gonna hold the socket onto the bolt. I'm gonna apply pressure to the breaker bar to break it free. There we go. Let's reset it. Hold it on there? Yeah, it's on. There we go, we got it free. Okay. Okay, second time's a charm. Try to get the other one free. <laughs> oh, the other one, oh. Yeah, down, down, right there. There we go. <laughs> okay, right, let's see how Again. good this one's gonna get, be. Put your weight into it. Get up over it, yeah, there you go. There you go. Get it, get it. Get there it. There we go. Yeah, good At job. At least one of them. <laughs> Liam got the bottom caliper bolt out. Now he's working on the top one. While he's getting the top one loose, he's supporting the weight of the caliper. So when that bolt comes out, it's not gonna drop and put stress on the line. Okay. Go ahead and slide it off. Got it? Yeah. Okay, so let's bring it up. So we're gonna use a caliper hook to hook this up to where we're not putting stress on the line. It's gonna support the weight of the caliper. Let's see. Liam is gonna remove the rotor off the hub. When these things are stubborn, what you'll wanna do is hit it with a rubber mallet or a dead blow hammer to break it free. But in this case, this rotor is already free. He could just pull it right off. This rotor has some deep grooving on it. This thing is wasted, it needs to be replaced and they have plans to do the tundra brake upgrade on this vehicle so it's a good time to do it the next thing we're going to do is get the dust cover off that covers the axle nut these are super common to get mangled by mechanics or do-it-yourselfers because they don't use the right progression of tools what we're going to use first is a skinny little wedge tool and we're going to get a small gap with it and then we're going to progress to a smaller cold chisel and then a larger cold chisel, and then finally pop it off with a pry bar. Just like that. A little more than that. You see it moved at all? Yeah. Okay, now turn it, and then go to in, in the next one. Just like that, dude. Doing good. Basically, Liam, if you don't see it moving, then you need to hit it a little harder. Oh yeah, it's moving. Okay. And again, you're holding it a little bit like this. Hold it like totally like, you know, in line. So okay. you're, you're going to, yeah, exactly. We've got the gap we wanted with the progression of the three chisels. Now Liam's going to pop it off with the pry bar. There you go. Good job. The next thing Liam is going to do is remove the cotter pin. He's going to straighten it out with a straight nose, needle nose pliers. This is a pretty long cotter pin, so to make our job easier, he's going to cut off the excess with a pair of dykes. Now he's going to lever the cotter pin out with the dykes just by putting it up against the face of the hub. Just keep on taking another bite and keep on doing that. There you go, good job. Now just remove that cover. We're going to remove the 35 millimeter CV axle nut with my DeWalt gun. There we go. The next thing we're going to remove is the castle nut that holds the lower control arm to the lower ball joint. He first has to remove a cotter pin. He's now going to zip off the 24 millimeter castle nut with the DeWalt gun. We're now going to break free the lower control arm from the lower ball joint using a puller from my OTC kit. 
The one thing that you want to make sure, especially if these are newer ball joints and you don't plan on replacing them, is you want to get the tines of the puller in between the boot and the lower control arm. You don't want to capture the boot and tear it. He got onto the spindle of the puller with a 19 millimeter socket and he's going to start cranking down and you're going to see this break free. Pull back the way you went. There you go. All right, good job. Okay, the next thing we're going to get free is the outer tie rod connection to the lower ball joint. Again, we have to remove a cotter pin first and then we're going to zip off the castle nut with the DeWalt gun. Using another puller from my OTC kit, we're going to break free the outer tie rod from the lower ball joint. I'm just going to do the same thing. It's going to pop. But it's not going to go flying anywhere. Oh. Just that's the thing with pops. You think it is, but it's not. Yeah. Famous lost words. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, then it comes flying at my face. Yeah. Oh, no. oh God. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. Stop. Look at your body mechanics. You're all twisted like a pretzel. <laughs> we got it right, don't we? Yeah, yeah. We, everything's fine. It's just tight. Just keep going. Yeah, just go for it, like your life depends on it. <laughs> Here, do this, Liam. Try this. Once you've got quite a bit of uh, force on it and it hasn't popped yet, you can maybe assist it. So we're going to do a combination of a puller and the big hammer technique. There oh. we go. <laughs> just took a few whacks, then it would go. The last thing we need to do to get this knuckle off the vehicle is we have to break free the upper ball joint from the upper control arm. Again, we are dealing with castle nuts. We got to take a cotter pin out first and then we're going to zip this nut off with our gun. Now using my smaller 3H drive DeWalt impact gun, we're going to remove the castle nut for the upper ball joint. It's not doing it. Okay, so we're going to have to go with the conventional way. My little gun wasn't up to the task, so we're going to use a big half-inch drive ratchet. Nope. Okay, hold on a second. Let me get you a breaker bar. All right. It's the same thing as last time. So take a look at this, dude. Look at the difference between you and then look at the difference between me. Get like, a, like almost like a combative stance and use your weight and pull, okay? Use all your body weight and your strength. Nope. Like this. Here. Lean back and pull on it. There you go. Good job, dude. Okay, now let's transition to the gun. Be broken free. To break free this upper ball joint connection from the upper control arm, we're going to use another puller from the OTC kit. It's a two jaw puller. So you want to capture the tines on the front and the back side right about in this area. So here's the setup. We have our two jaw puller capturing the upper control arm with the spindle of the puller up against the spindle of the upper ball joint. And then I'm gonna use a ratcheting 16 millimeter flex head gear wrench, box end wrench to tighten the puller. From experience, when this thing pops free with a type of two jaw puller like this, it can pop free with a lot of force. And one time the puller went right up my face and luckily didn't take my eye out. So I've got a strap here to hopefully help capture the force when it pops free. I'm also going to do this. I'm going to put this right in front of my face so if it does come flying it's going to hit this pad and not going in my face. <laughs> and as you saw it comes out with a lot of force. So you want to be really careful of the three things you have to break free with pullers. This is the one to be mindful of and get your face or any body part that you don't want damaged out of the path. We have everything broken free. The last thing we have to do is push the CV axle out of the hub. Sometimes it could be a little bit stuck. So 
grab a brass hammer or a plastic mallet or a dead blow hammer, hit it and drive the CV axle out. Once you see it moving, you're most likely good to go. And then you can pick up the knuckle off the lower control arm and then just push this out and you can remove the whole assembly. Clear this. Okay, now you're gonna have to pick it up off the lower control arm while pushing that out. Is that come? Oh no, that's right, you still had some hammering left to do. No, you can push it. Can you push it with your hand? There you go, you got it. <laughs> Let go anymore. Now try to grab from the back side and pull it. Support it with your left hand and reach around the back side where Sean's doing and pull it out. Oh yeah, it's going. You're gonna have to pick, you're gonna have to pick up the, the whole knuckle off the, the lower control arm to free it, and then you can pull it out the rest of the way. There you go. Now just hold up the, the CV axle and pull, pull out with just one hand. Here, let me see it, Sean. You just, see, you had to just get it. You were fighting, you were fighting, you were causing yourself friction. As soon as you pulled it up, it would just fall right out. So you, you just had it bound a little bit by putting weight on it, okay. So now we have the whole knuckle off the vehicle. We're going to bring this over to our bench. We're now going to remove the lower ball joint from the steering knuckle using the DeWalt gun. The size of the bolts is a 14 millimeter head. One second. Just pull the trigger all the way. All the way. All, all the right. way. Don't, don't be tentative. Full tenant. speed. Full speed. There you go. There we go. You don't have to be gentle with these things. Just go for it. There you go. Now we're done. There you go. Good job. Okay. Now we're going to bring this whole assembly to the bench vise and we're going to take off some of the seals. So what we have is an OTC slide hammer puller with a couple jaws capturing this inner seal. And we're gonna slide hammer it off. So you, all you're gonna watch your hand. Do, yeah, you good. So just go boom, 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 and I'll just hold smack this here. It. Yeah. There we go. We got it. Yay! Okay. The next thing we're gonna do is remove the dust shield bolts so we can get the knuckle onto the press in the right position. So we're gonna use a 12 millimeter box end wrench to remove those. All the way or just loosen? All the way, so once you get it broken free with that box inside, you could sp switch it switch to the, the ratchet, ratchet side, yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, well. Here. There you go. There you go, and then you're learning, you're learning. Here's the setup we have on the 20 ton Harbor Freight Press. First, I have a couple one inch steel plates that are about a foot long as the bottom layer. Next is a couple four by six pressure treated pieces of wood. On top of those is a half inch plate. Again, that's about 12 inches long, four inches wide. That's going on top of the four by sixes. Then to capture the knuckle, we're using a couple more four by 12 by one inch thick plates to support the knuckle. So if you pick it up right here, you can see you're capturing the tab right there. This is a good shot of how we have it set up. The arm is going out kind of like at a 45 away from being perpendicular to the press. You're capturing this part of the knuckle right here on this front tab on the back side you're capturing a tab right here so you just want to make sure that you're capturing a meaty part of the knuckle so when you're applying the force necessary to press the hub out of the bearing it's going to be able to support it no problem you can see from this angle how the upper plates are capturing the steering knuckle we're using a press leaf from my press leaf kit that makes a good mating with the face of the hub, but is smaller than the inner diameter of the bearing. So as this presses the hub out, it's not gonna get stuck 
into the inner race of the bearing. One thing you want to do before you do this is cross your fingers, maybe say a prayer to the press gods that when you press this hub out, that it comes out clean and the inner race of the bearing doesn't stay stuck onto the shaft of the hub because then you're going to have to cut the damn thing off. So we're going to do a moment of silence and pray to the press gods. So Liam is going to get the honors for this. He's going to see how much force is necessary to remove the hub from the bearing. It requires a ton of force. Just know that it's going to load up, load up, load up, and finally break free. And it might scare you a little bit. Okay, one second. That loud noise was the hub starting to break free from the inner race of the bearing and then now the press work should go pretty smooth. What I forgot to mention a little setup is we have a pad in between the 4x6s so when the hub drops out it's not going to hit the floor, it's going to protect it. Well, our prayer to the press gods worked. The hub came out of the inner race of the bearing and uh, we lucked out. So this is a little bit rusty. We're gonna spend a little time with some brass brushes and clean this surface up a little bit. Now that you have the hub removed, you can remove some parts. The first one is the bearing spacer. And just remember the orientation. It has a beveled edge and that edge faces inboard. Okay, so remember that. And then the next thing you can pull out is your ABS tone ring. And it goes on in this fashion with the open side facing the inside. And then you could just pick this up and now your dust shield is free. If you live in the rust belt, this might be a part that you might want to replace because it's all rusted out. This one is kind of bent up. So we might do a little bit of straightening on this before we put it back together. The next thing we have to do is we're going to get our slide hammer puller on to this outer seal, pull this off so we can get access to a snap ring we have to pull off. Go ahead. And there it is. Here's the snap wing we want to remove, but from experience, this snap ring is now loaded up because the bearing has pushed some pressure on it. So we're going to get this back on the press using an old bearing race to put pressure back this direction to take pressure off the snap ring. So our setup for this part is we just have one plate going across the other plates to support the knuckle. We have the tabs for the lower ball joint hanging off the back side. Like we mentioned, an old bearing race is perfect for this. But if you haven't done this job before, you're not going to have one of these. So just grab the biggest sleeve you have or a piece of pipe. The diameter of this outer race is three and three quarter inches. So a piece of pipe or something else close to that would work fine. So I'm gonna put this right on top and then I'm gonna use a four by four inch, half inch plate to put on top of it. All we're trying to accomplish with this is push the bearing down a little bit to where it takes pressure off that snap ring so we can remove it easier. So it's only going to move like a sixteenth of an inch. When you feel it load up and it's not going anywhere, you've pressed it far enough. And now I can see that there's less pressure on that snap ring. Now we're going to go back to the workbench. Using a pair of 90 degree snap ring pliers, we're going to remove the snap ring. There's a couple little ears in here with hooks that you can grab onto. Keep going. Squeeze it hard. I think it maybe it's still bound up a bit. No, it moved a little bit. Yeah, it did move. By using the old outer race and pushing on the actual snap ring, it moved the whole assembly back a little bit, but not enough to where we can free the snap ring. 
So we got the biggest sleeve in our press kit, capturing the bearing and press down a little bit to push the bearing just a little bit more in. And now we can tell that the snap ring is unloaded and we'll be able to remove it now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and use the snap ring pliers again and get this snap ring out. Oh, there we go. Oh, there you go. There, go. there it is, it's out. Do yourself a favor and before you press the bearing out of the knuckle, take note of the orientation. The bearing has two distinct sides. It has almost a full silver side and then it's got a side with some black material. The way that it goes into the knuckle is it has the silver side facing outboard and then the black side faces inboard. So when you press it in, the black side is gonna go in first, just like this, it's gonna go in like that. So don't mix it up. Luckily you have this video as a reference in case you forget, but just remember, silver side facing out, black side facing in. We're now gonna press the bearing out of the steering knuckle. We have it set up similarly as we did when we pressed the hub out. We're capturing the knuckle on the tabs with a couple steel plates going across the other steel plates. As you see right here. So just make sure you've got to capture it on a meaty part of the knuckle before you start applying all this force to drive the bearing out of the knuckle. This sleeve is the biggest sleeve in the press kit that we're going to link in the video description. Pressing the bearing out requires much less force than it takes to press the hub through the bearing. So you're going to find that it's not going to take that much force to drive it out of the knuckle. There it is. Woohoo! Success! And here is your bearing removed from the steering knuckle. One question that I've seen come up many times is the way this bearing is made. It's got a split in the middle. So you can see all this movement and people think, oh my God, I got a bad bearing. But that's just the way Toyota made it. Why the engineers made the bearing in this fashion, I have no clue. I don't even know what the true term for this is, but we'll just call it a split bearing. So this is normal. People think that there's actually a lot of play in the new bearing, but once this bearing is installed in the knuckle, the hub is pressed through and you tighten that CV axle nut to 174 foot pounds, that preloads the bearing and then you're not gonna get any movement anymore. So don't worry that this thing looks like it's damaged right from the factory. This is normal play. This is the way they come from Toyota. We did a little cleaning up of the parts. We saw some rust inside the hub. We saw some rust on the ABS tone ring and the bearing spacer. So we cleaned them up with a wire wheel, wire brush, and some emery cloth. Now we're ready to reassemble all the parts onto the knuckle. The first thing we gotta do is get the bearing in. And what I always like to do is I like to use some wheel bearing grease just to help break down the surface tension so the bearing goes in smoother. I'm first gonna put some grease on the inside of here. And I'm gonna smear it in, I'm gonna use a lot of grease. This is just a high temp wheel bearing grease. You can get it at any automotive store. Okay, the inside of the knuckle is greased up good. Now I'm gonna grease the outside race of the bearing. So remember, the black side faces inboard and the silver side is gonna be facing out. So we're gonna put the black side in and then we're gonna bring it over to our press. The setup is very similar. We have the same two plates that are sandwiching the four by six. We just have one one inch plate supporting the knuckle. We got the bearing in there and the very beginning opening of the knuckle has a relief. So it's gonna fit in there a little bit. Then get your head down in here and just make sure that it looks pretty square because this is gonna help the press work. If it's a little cocked at the beginning, it'll still work, but you'll find that the 
press will load up a little bit until the bearing corrects and gets in better alignment, then it'll start pressing easy. So just get your head in here, look straight across the bearing. I can see that it looks like it's lined up pretty darn good. What we're first going to do is we're going to use our half inch plate on top. We're going to press the bearing in until the bottom part of the plate meets the face of the knuckle and then we're going to switch to something else to drive it in all the way. Okay, that seems like you felt the load up? Yeah. Okay. Now, to put it on there and turn it lefty loosey to, re to release the, the just keep going. Oh, there we go. Good job. Okay. We now have the bearing most of the way in. The way we're going to drive it in the rest of the way is by using the old bearing race. We have to drive it in just a little bit more to where we expose the groove that the snap ring has to go in. Because I have this old bearing race, that's what we're going to use as our press sleeve to press the bearing in all the way. You want to be putting pressure on the outer race and not on the inner race. You can do that if you have one of the old bearing outer races or what you can do is you could just put your old bearing on top and that would work as well because it will be contacting the outer race as well as the surface of the inner part too but it's not going to do any damage to the bearing if you do it in this fashion. Another thing that you might be wondering is, well, am I going to get the old bearing stuck in there? And the answer is no, because remember I said there's a little bit of a relief at the beginning part of the knuckle. So you can use the outer race or the whole bearing and push it in that little bit more and it won't get stuck into the knuckle because of that relief. So we're going to put the outer race on there. And then we're going to use our 4x4 four four half inch plate. And then we're going to go down with the press again. Okay, Leo. There you go. So you're going to fill it go down and then it's going to load up. Okay, that, well, it, yeah. just, it just loaded up. Okay. So you can hear how we were getting some movement. It was kind of making that crunching sound. And then as soon as you feel the press load up, you're not hearing any movement, you're not seeing any movement or feeling it, then you know you've bottomed out and then you can release the press. And the dead giveaway that you've got it bottomed out all the way is you look in here and you can see that the groove for the snap ring is now exposed so we can get the new snap ring in place. So we're now gonna get the snap ring in place and Liam's gonna demonstrate how you can do this just with your hands. You don't need a snap ring pliers. You don't need them, but... Oh. There you <laughs> go. Good job, Liam. You passed the man test of being able to get the snap ring in. <laughs> All right. Okay, on to the next step. We're now gonna get the outer seal in place. We're using some of the same high temp wheel bearing grease to lubricate the surfaces. Lubricated the surface of the knuckle, lubricated the inside surface of the seal, and then you just press it in place. And then what we use to knock it in place is a brass drift and a hammer. You first try to get it as square as possible on here, and then you look to see what side is the highest then you just start tapping it in, looking to where the high side is, hit that, look around, hit another high side, and just work it down until the face of the seal comes in contact with the face of the knuckle. It is going on pretty crooked right here. getting there. As you're going around with your brass drift and your ball peen hammer, when you start hearing a more solid sound and you don't see the seal moving anymore, that means you've driven it 
to its fully seated position. So you can actually hear it and feel it. That feels solid. Solid. Another visual indicator that you got the seal fully seated is you'll see that the black rubber seal will be in contact with a snap ring letting you know that it's fully seated. And if you see that around the whole circumference, it's fully seated. The next thing we want to do is get the hub pressed into the bearing, but you can't forget to get your dust shield on first or you'll be leaving it off if you forget. So get it on first. The orientation is like this. These are the two tabs that the brake caliper bolt to. And this cutout right here is allowing for the brake caliper to fit in this spot right here. And then you want the concave side facing up towards you as you drop this over the top of the knuckle. Another dead giveaway you got the right orientation is your bolt holes will line up. So now Liam's going to get the four 12 millimeter bolts in place. He's going to tighten these up with a ratcheting box and wrench. 12 millimeter. Yep, that's going the right way. There you go. That's good. We're not going to bother torquing this. We're just going to get them snugged up. Use that German spec we all know and love. Good in time. <laughs> We're now ready to press the hub into the bearing. I'm going to use some high temp wheel bearing grease again for this application. Put some on the inside of the bearing and then put some on the shaft of the hub. I also put some on this face right here because when this gets pressed in the hub face is going to be right in contact with this rubber seal so I'll even put a little bit of grease on this rubber seal too okay and then we'll just drop this in here like this and then we got to get this over to the press really important step that you have to make sure you do is when you're driving the hub through the bearing you want to support this inner race so as the force of the hub going through the bearing is going out this way, a press sleeve that's big enough to support the inner race is going to be supporting it. The way we're going to drive this hub in is different than we showed in the manual hub swap videos. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the assembly upside down. So the hub is going to be on the bottom. The face of the hub is supported by half inch plate and it might not appear so, but the studs are clearing this bottom plate just enough. They aren't touching, so no pressure is going to be placed on the studs. And then up above, we chose a press sleeve that's fitting the inner race really well, but it's bigger than the diameter of the hub to where it will slide through here and not get stuck. So we're centering that on the race. Then we're coming in with our plate on top. And then we're going to drive force and press the two pieces together. Do yourself a favor and make sure everything is lined up really nicely. Make sure whatever plate you're using is allowing you enough height to where you're not putting pressure on the studs. If you didn't have a small plate like this, then you could put one of your press sleeves underneath the face of the hub and use that as a base. The press sleeve you're using here, make sure that it's coming in contact with the inner race as equal as possible. You get your upper puck on top, and when you're happy with everything, you cinch it up, give it a final look, and then go ahead and start pressing the hub into the bearing. You might feel the hub kind of correct. It might load up a little bit because it wasn't perfectly square, and then all of a sudden it'll pop. It'll correct itself and start going in straight. Then it should go really smooth the whole way. When you feel the press load up, that means you're done pressing. There we go. You feel it load up? Yep. Okay. When you feel the press load up, you can actually see that the 
face of the seal comes in contact with the hub, you know you're done. Now that we have the hub pressed into the bearing, we're gonna get two more parts in place. The ABS tone ring and the bearing spacer. The ABS tone ring goes in first and it goes in in this fashion with the open side or concave side facing up. I'm just gonna put a little bit of bearing grease on the face of this because why not? It's not gonna hurt anything. And I'm gonna fit this in. It should be able to drop in place without any press work. Yeah, there we go. When it comes to the bearing spacer, remember that the chamfered or beveled side faces up. Now I found that this will not just slide in place and we're now in untrodden territory. So we're gonna have to probably press this in place because I don't think it will just slide on with hand strength. So again, we're gonna use some grease to lubricate the inner diameter of this and then we're gonna take this back over to the press and press it in place. I'll put some onto the shaft of the hub too. Okay, let's go over to the press. So we're using another sleeve out of our press sleeve kit that's gonna fit this really well and be bigger than the diameter of the hub, but I don't think it makes a difference anyways because the hub doesn't actually protrude out. The hub's gonna be a little bit recessed. So put that on, get your puck from the kit, put that on, and then we're gonna bring the press down. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then we'll just press it on till we feel it loading up a bit. So go ahead, Liam. Loading up? Yeah. Stop, okay. That looks about right. The hub is just a little bit recessed to the face of the bearing spacer. The last step is getting the inner seal in place. Again, I'm gonna use some bearing grease. I'm gonna lubricate the surfaces. And then I'm gonna lubricate the inside of the knuckle. And then we're just gonna plop this down in place. And then what we used before is we used the outer race of the old bearing to press it in place. It ends up being a good press sleeve. So I'll plop that in there. And then we're gonna use our half inch steel plate on top of it to strike against. Look for the high side. It looks like this back side's a little high. When you hear that solid sound and it's not driving in any further, you know you're fully seated. One last sanity check is just make sure that the bearing feels smooth and it does. And we are done. Now, as part of this job, here's a couple of good things to note. If you detect play in the upper ball joint, go ahead and replace it. If you see that the boot is ripped, Toyota sells a kit and we'll link the kit in the video description. Another good thing to replace at this time is the lower ball joints. If the lower ball joints have never been replaced on your vehicle, definitely replace them because they have been known to fail. And when they fail, it could cause you to crash and wreck your rig and maybe hurt yourself and other people. So replace your lower ball joints. We're now gonna get the knuckle back on the vehicle. The way you do that is you have to support the weight of the knuckle while lining up the CV axle with the hub. And once you get that all lined up, you can slide the shaft of the CV axle all the way in. And then you gotta work on lining up the lower ball joint with the lower control arm. The whole assembly together is pretty heavy. It's a little bit of a strain, but if you use your man strength like Liam is, you'll be able to do it. Okay. <laughs> and I'll be here for emotional support. Maybe I'll even help. And hold it up with one hand. Oh, there you go. Good job, dude. Good. Twist it a little bit. Twist it. You got to line oh. up the splines. There you go. Pull it in a little more. Let it go a little more. I don't know. Let's see. 
Where can you are you exposing the nut? Okay, we could draw it in the rest of the way with the nut. You might find that the CV axle won't slide in all the way, but when you get the nut on here and start tightening it up, it will draw the axle all the way in place on the back side. We've got the knuckle back on the rig. We pulled the CV axle through the hub. We got the axle nut started, but not torqued to spec yet. And then we got the castle nut connected on the upper ball joint and we're going to torque this castle nut to 80 foot pounds. I think that was it. You think or you know? Try it again. There you go. You got it. You got it. <laughs> I think. <laughs> now the question is, is the hole lined up? Ah, uh, looks like it's almost there. We might have to tighten it just a oh, little bit. Right. When you get it to the torque spec, the next thing you got to do is get a fresh cotter pin in. If the cotter pin hole doesn't line up well with the slots of the castle nut, then you're going to have to tighten it up a little more. You never want to go looser. You always want to go a little bit tighter. There we go. Okay, he's got a new cotter pin in, and then he's going to bend it over the top with a pair of needle nose pliers. We're now going to get the outer tie rod connected up to the lower ball joint. We're going to torque the castle nut for the outer tie rod to 67 foot pounds. There it is. Being the smart guy that he is, Liam is going to use a new cotter pin. Do not reuse cotter pins. We cinched up the lower ball joint castle nut. Now we transition to the torque wrench and we're going to torque it to 105 foot pounds. You're not, you're not lined up very good, dude. So get, get it to where you can like pull, pull good like that. So change your body position to where so you're fighting yourself. Get, get over here more. There you go. There. <laughs> I know it's it's fun watching me try to figure this no, out. You're gonna, get it. You're, gonna get it. you're learning, man. There it is. Okay, right. we got it. Now, nine times out of ten, once you hit the torque spec of 105, you're gonna find the hole in the lower ball joint's not gonna line up with the slots of the castle nut, and you'll probably have to go tighter. But maybe we got lucky. Next, we're gonna put the rotor back on. To have an easier time getting the caliper in place, we're going to use a couple lug nuts and a couple washers to draw this in square, and then we'll have an easier time fitting the brake caliper over the rotor. Now we're going to put the caliper back on the rotor. We have to unhang this, and then slide it over the top. It doesn't quite slide, does it? <laughs> so are you looking at it? Are you seeing the pads going yeah, the, on the other side? the pads are too close together. Yeah? You sure? I'm pretty sure. But okay, let me take a look. Maybe see. I can get it over. You got it? Oh, I really don't think so. Okay, let me see it. person you do it it works <laughs> <laughs> now we got to get our two 17 millimeter bolts in place we're going to torque the brake caliper bolts to 90 foot pounds that hit? no i don't think that's hitting it might it might be let me feel it yeah, you hit it. Oh, that was right? Yeah, you hit okay. it. Just use a little bit more of a sharp movement. You already hit it, yeah. Oh, alright. Okay. We've got both of the caliper bolts torqued to 90 foot-pounds. Let me just cinch it up a little bit. It's loaded up. Okay, here's another good body mechanic. So, when you're breaking free lug nuts, when you're tiny lug nuts you always want to be pushing with your weight you don't want to be lifting up because you're straining your back so get like this see how I'm doing it like bending the knee and I'm just push leaning into my putting my weight into it okay we're now going to torque the CV 
axle nut to 174 foot-pounds. The way we're going to be able to hold it steady is we have Scott inside the rig with his foot on the brake, clamping onto the rotor, and then Liam is going to get on her with a big half-inch drive torque wrench and torque it to 174 foot-pounds. There you go. You got it. Yay! Woohoo! So next we're going to get this in place and you have to find a spot where the hole lines up well. Not yet, not yet. That looks good right there. And get a new big cotter pin in place. Don't reuse the old one. Next we're going to get the dust cap back on. Try to get it as square as possible. That's looking okay. And just start tapping it in with the, whatever the high side is. That looks high. Yeah. It, but hold on it. Hold it. Hold it with one hand. Counter pressure and like. That might be too far gone. Just no, you got it. it. In there. Here, just hold it just it. like this. Bam, bam, bam. Don't hit it on the center, but the edge. You're being too timid with it. Here. Oh, there right. you go. There it goes. Yeah. Show it who's boss. <laughs> Go like this. Go like like that. It's on. Yeah. Does it look like it's on all the way? She's on there. Okay, let's just give it another. Give it a spin. And see it. Yeah. Okay, we're in like Flynn. We're now going to reattach the brake line to the knuckle. Now we're getting this ABS sensor bracket in place. You just fit it over there. Squeeze it and get your little 10 millimeter nut in there. For all these small brackets, the brake line bracket, the ABS bracket, we're not torquing them to spec. We're just cinching them up tight and calling it good. And that's good. So now we're going to plug this clip back into the brake line bracket. It just plugs in right there. And then what I like to do with these ABS sensors, I'm going to put a little bit of multi-purpose grease on the O-ring. So if we ever have to remove the ABS sensor in the future, it's just easier to pull out with a little bit of lubrication on the O-ring. Just plug it back in. And get your little 10 millimeter bolt back in. And there it is. I think we're done, huh? Is that it? Top wheels on. As I get on the ground and I kind of lift with my legs and my arms, I brace my arms against there. So you get up underneath there. And so I'm kind of bracing my forearms again and then I'm just lift, kind of lifting with my legs and boom. See how it goes? No strain on your back. If you're going from up above, it's a strain on your back. Try it out and see if you like it. Wait, why would you be taking tires off at a gas station? I worked at a Chevron gas station. It was full service. That was back in the day when they had full service gas stations. We did tire repairs and stuff. Tire repairs at a gas station. All right. Okay. We're now going to get the tire back on. Oh, this is going on film. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. You got to get your arms in there. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> this is going on the bloopers. Hold on a second, man. You're doing it all wrong. <laughs> you're doing the, the Cirque du Soleil yeah, you're, you're, you're lift. You're humping the thing. Okay. So get, brace your arms like this. So, I don't know. <laughs> you're making it look hard, man. <laughs> it's not as easy okay. as it looks. Okay, here. <laughs> I am motionless. Use your legs. Okay, let me do this. Let me do it. I, try, I tried my best, but... Yeah, I'm sorry. I okay. guess my legs are just shot. What I was trying to show them is this. This saves your back. You brace your arms against your legs, and then you just kind of lift up with your legs and your arms, and you just pop it on. No strain whatsoever. The kid will get it one day, maybe. <laughs> All right, we'll get the lug nuts on. That doesn't go on the actual video. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know we're putting it on. <laughs> oh, great. There goes my image. Get the, I almost get the feel like I need on. a shot at redemption. <laughs> yeah, put the lug nuts on. That will, yeah. that will go redeem you. As a final sanity check, Liam's going to double check and make sure that we don't have any wheel bearing play. He's going to grab the wheel at the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position using opposing forces. And how does it feel, Liam? 
It's not moving. That's good. That's what we want. All right. We were successful. Now we're going to jack up the vehicle, get it off the jack stand, drop the vehicle to the ground, and we're going to torque the lug nuts to 85 foot-pounds. All right, we are all done with this job. It was a success. And we got Liam some valuable ranching time. He's a beginning auto mechanic, but I think he did a pretty good job. He's got some stuff to learn, but I think overall he did a pretty good job. What do you think, Liam? Was it, put it lightly, isn't it? <laughs> was it a good experience? Yes, definitely. Are you going to stick with auto mechanics? Sure. Okay. That wasn't a very confident... Uh... <laughs> well, I'm still new, so... The enthusiasm will grow. Be okay. With every busted knuckle. Part of the reason why we did this job is Liam was experiencing a little bit of shaking at freeway speeds. We're hoping this got rid of it, but... They also figured out that the steering rack has a little bit of play. And they also know that the vehicle was involved in an accident, a front end collision before they purchased it. So we don't know if this is gonna 100% fix the shimmy at highway speeds, but we're hoping it does. And we will report back in the video description and let you know that. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean and special guest Liam and his dad, Scott. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye. Sick mods and happy wrenching, people. Learn from this kid right here. You can do it. It's not hard. Get into it. Invest in some tools and learn auto mechanics. It's not rocket science. Because look at me. I'm not a rocket scientist, obviously. <laughs> Peace out and bye-bye.